Hey guys, Mr. B here again, making another sick awesome math video. This one is going to be on finding the derivative of a cube root. So if we have a cube root, let's call it y is equal to the cube root of x. So the derivative of anything, a root, square root, uh, fourth root, anything like that, it's always easier to think of it as the exponential form. So a cube root is the same as an exponent of 1 over 3. So now we're going to use the power rule. So if you guys remember from your, from your classes, the power rule is essentially anything x to the n just becomes y prime n times x n minus 1. So we take the exponent down, it goes in front, subtract 1 off the exponent. So when we go to take the derivative of this guy, we take the, exp the exponent down, it goes in front, and then we subtract off 1, so 1 subtract. 1 over 3 subtract 1 is negative 2 over 3, so it becomes x to the negative 2 over 3. So that form generally works most of the time. Um, now you may have a particularly uh, stubborn calculus teacher who doesn't like negative exponents. So if that's the case, you take it down to the bottom because it's a negative exponent. You take it down with the 3 and it becomes x to the 2 over 3. Now if you're Calculus teacher is a particularly nasty person and he doesn't like exponents at all in fractional form. He might make you write it as a radical, so you can write it like this. So 3 stays there, and this since we take the bottom number as our index, so cube root, and then we can take this guy, the top one, as our exponent of x squared. Now, personally, I always prefer this form. Because if we have to perform any more operations on this guy, like a second derivative or anything like that, it's always easier to deal with this than it is to deal with that. So that's why I'm totally in favor of this. Um, so the other th thing you might run into when you're dealing with a cube root is what happens if there's not just x underneath. So if we have, um, I don't know, Let's, I'm just going to keep it simple for the sake of this example. Let's say we just have a linear function, so 3x plus 1. So if I have a linear function underneath, this is essentially now a chain rule question. So the chain rule is y is equal to f prime of u times u prime. So you have the parent function or the outside function or the overall function, whatever your teacher calls it. Um, and then you have the inside function, um, uh, u prime. So this would be your u prime right here. And that's your f of u right there. So the outside function is the cube root. The inside is the, um, is the u prime. So I always teach my students to do mental chain rule. It is 100 times easier than actually writing all this garbage down because um, it really is better. So a lot of times my students will, will visualize derivatives always in terms of the chain rule. So if I go back to this guy for one second, this is the derivative of it. So if I change that x to a u, so if I say that my function is, so y the cube root of u. So that u can be absolutely anything. So that means that my derivative is 1 over 3 u to the negative 2 over 3. The only thing is, because this derivative is not with respect to x, we have to make sure that we add in the u prime afterwards. We always have to add that in. So this is essentially what my students think of when they're taking derivatives. Anytime you have any function that has something other than just x inside it, you have to use this form. So you, the way they think of it is they take the derivative of the outside function, 1 over 3, and then Whatever's on the inside stays on the inside, so that u part is just u right there. And then I you know, do my little derivative, and then I multiply it by the inside derivative, which is just 3. And in this case, those 3's cancel out, and I'm left with just this guy. And that's the way I'm going to leave this one. Negative root 2 over 3. Actually, you know what, I'll, I'll write it in the final form. So in final form, it might look like this, even though I would never expect my students to write it. But it all depends on what your calculus teacher wants. So some teachers love that, but I prefer this. And this is the derivative, so I should make sure that distinction is made. All right, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video on the derivative of the cube root, and I hope it helps you in your calculus studies. 
Good luck in any assessments you have coming up and any final exams. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.